Hello, this is a demonstration of the IRNDT software from MobyTherm. My name is John Cabrera and I will be providing you with this demo. Uh, first off, let me start by uh, showing you some of the components of the system. Of course, we have the IRNDT software itself. And let's do a connection here to the camera. Our camera is an SC6000 cooled thermocam. Uh, and our subject today is a small 2 inch by 2 inch uh, thin, mil thin film solar panel. Sorry, solar cell. Our excitation source over there is a standard off the shelf audio amp providing uh, for this demonstration somewhere between 44 and 150 milliamps of power as the excitation. And then we have the PC so running the software and our excitation module there, which is driven by a data acquisition board providing uh, analog 10 volts for modulating the power. Okay, let's just uh, connect to the live view of the camera and make sure we're getting an image. And we are. Uh, you can see a s sort of an annulus there in the center. That's actually a reflection of the lens in the, in the solar cell surface. Um, our final measurement will not contain that artifact uh, since the camera is not oscillating at 20 hertz, which is going to be our excitation lock-in frequency. Okay, so let's uh, set up a workspace. Uh, we're going to be doing a lock-in workspace. So I'm choosing the lock-in wizard, selecting my excitation source, and I'm putting the camera into free run. That's all we need for this measurement. And now I'm going to make a couple of changes here. I want to express my excitation in hertz and my acquisition duration in seconds. I'm going to set the duration to 30 seconds for now and set the frequency to 20 hertz and make sure that my camera is at a decent speed. Let's just put it at 80 for now, 80 frames per second. And now we're going to have a, a live view look at what our excitation looks like. I'm going to change the palette to TSA just to make it easier to look at. And let me play around with the palettes just a little bit to give you an idea. So as you can see, the, the annulus feature of the lens is still very pronounced. I'll try and zoom in a little bit here. You can see some of the shunts that can be seen uh, on the edges and over the surface of the cell. Uh, so that's, that's what a typical thermal image would look like. And I'll have a look and see what the power currently is at. Uh, well, the acquisition stopped. Let me start it again. OK, so we're at 34 milliamps. Not very much juice going in there. All right, so now let's take a, an actual lock-in measurement. And that's way too many frames. 2,400 frames is more than we need, so we just need about three seconds worth. Maybe not even that. That's 240 images that we're going to acquire to build our composite image. All right, and you can see the progress bar. That's the actual excitation period. And then this is the second bar is our processing time. So processing takes a little bit longer than the actual acquisition of the, of the data. It all depends on how fast you're running the camera. You know, of course, for different materials, you need different frame rates. OK, so here's our results window. Doesn't look very interesting yet. Again, I'm going to choose the TSA palette. That seems to be the nice one that everybody likes. Uh, we don't see a whole lot. We see some dots scattered around. So now I'm going to draw in the sliders for the equalization of the palette and then I'm going to scroll through and now we're starting to see some of the some of the features of our lock-in measurement showing up now the picture looks very noisy uh, in fact I can't tell if you can see what I'm looking at but we can see the defects and they are somewhat more isolated uh, but because of the low power that we're using for the excitation uh, the image is going to be noisy so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on the excitation source 
And now I'm going to bump it up to 140. So that's 140 milliamps. And then we're going to do the measurement again and see if it makes a difference in our resulting image. And I'm expecting that it will. So depending on the material, it takes some playing around with. Uh, this particular solar cell is embedded in a piece of glass, so the settings for it are slightly different than for a bare thin film uh, that you don't have to compensate for, for the heat coming through the glass. Okay, so here is the image at 100 and 140. Let me get my sliders tuned in. All right. So now we can see the defects more localized. And you can see that some of these are cold shunts and some are hot shunts. Um, So they're just varying in temperature. There's some up here near the top. So the lock-in technique really comes in handy when you're trying to spot those defects that are really close together and you really need to see the separation. Let's open up the palette contrast here a little bit, see if we can bring out any other. Let me do a phase correction also. That seemed to eliminate some of the noise. Bring this in narrow. We can do an equalize filter. Eh, doesn't look very good here. But you can see clearly the, the defect. We also have a uh, quick way to generate reports based on our uh, results and it records all of the settings of, and the results as well as a couple of pictures uh, in Excel format. So it gives all of your test information here. Uh, the live image versus the results image. The sequence profile for a given region of interest. And it also gives you the lock-in data uh, in column format if you want to do other analysis on it. And that is all there is to the software. Uh, there are other modules for pulse thermography, flash, uh, TSA lock-in. All these modules can be purchased separately or together in any configuration, as well as uh, an entire assortment of excitation sources and uh, heat sources. So thank you for your time. Have a nice day.